Today we're gonna to be having some fun with a 2005 Ford F-150 that's got some pretty rotted out frame rails. Uh, I've seen some bad ones, but this is definitely the worst one I've seen. So we're gonna see what we can do. So the guy that bought this truck brought it over here and I quickly realized I could not lift it up on my two post lift. Um, it, I, 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 yeah, you take one look underneath and it, it's like I told him <laughs> to take it back home. You should probably get rid of it. But he's back and, and we're, gonna, we're gonna see what, what we can do here. Um, we've got some parts here. Uh, we got the, the Dorman uh, frame caps. I don't know what they're officially called, but the Dorman parts ordered from Rock Auto. I'll, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, and we're gonna install them. And, and I'm, I'm optimistic about this, but like I said, this one's pretty bad. Um, if, if you're familiar with this, you've probably seen some rotted out frames, but I don't think I've seen one quite this bad. I've gotta at least drop the gas tank out of this thing. Uh, the exhaust, probably gonna have to move that also. So moving along here, I have, I took the, what I wound up doing is I wound up cutting the exhaust. It looked like the clamp was gonna be a big fight. And so honestly, it's gonna be easier. Obviously, I'm gonna be in here welding anyways. So it's gonna be easier to weld these two pipes back together again than to deal with the clamp and all of that. So I just cut it. And, and then I, instead of having the joint back here, I moved it up here. Of course, there's this clamp also. That looked like that wasn't gonna be any better if you see those bolts right there. So cut the exhaust. There were three hangers. I pulled everything out all the way back, all the way out to the tailpipe. There it sits right there. Uh, and then here was where one of the hangers went. There's the hanger right there. Uh, and that looked like that was gonna interfere a little bit right at the bottom because the bolt was right in there. So I just took that out. We'll sort out the placement of it later. Um, and then I also took off the bracket right here that went up above this heat shield and bolted the frame rail. I took that out, took the bolts out. One of them was already, uh, as they do, it was already pretty much broken through right there. But I, I think that's the only stuff I need to pull out of this side. So then I put this in and then I used a bottle jack and just kind of pushed it up. And it's looking like it's lined up pretty good. So I kind of have just left that for the time being. And now I'm spinning around here, focusing my attention to the driver's side. Uh, first thing I did is disconnect the fuel line and the, the evap line and then I put a little rubber cap over the fuel line. I'm going to be very cautious with this. In fact, this fuel tank is going to go out of the shed completely when I do all this welding. There's a lot of welding to be done. I don't want to run into any issues with any fuel vapors around. So this is just heading out the door once I drop it out of here. Um, since I got the exhaust out, it's easy for me to pop my head up here and it looks like I should be able to loosen up the clamp on the filler neck here, the filler hose. And then I've already unplugged this harness right here. Uh, and then there's just a few fittings and another harness that goes in the fuel pump assembly. And then I'll, I'll be able to have that all disconnected and then I'm gonna drop the tank down. I'm actually not sure. I should have looked at the fuel gauge. I'm not sure how much fuel is in this. That's always the biggest problem is uh, dropping a tank that has a lot of fuel in it. So, uh, but things are moving along. This thing, as, as you probably, <laughs> probably already know, is rusty. So I'm hoping that I don't have trouble with uh, breaking off the, the two bolts that hold the straps up wherever they are there. Um, hopefully I don't have any trouble with those, but we're gonna get everything disconnected up top. Then we're gonna unbolt these two straps and drop. Okay, I've got the tank pulled out now. And the only thing that I missed was um, all these four connectors that I took off the top here. The big one, the, the, vent, uh, the vent tube, that comes back. It's part of an assembly and it comes back and then there's a quick connect back here. There, and there's two of them. There's this other EVAP. Uh, one so there's two connections here well i obviously disconnected this one but this other one i just unclipped it here and it's got a wire harness on it and so it was easiest to leave that up in the truck so you can see where the big one is right there and where that other quick connect is i just left that but i disconnected the one kind of behind it there and that was the easy way to drop that out and and everything came out the two bolts came out surprisingly without breaking so I've got the tank dropped off and I'm gonna relocate it in a different building and then I can proceed with, uh, with the frame repair. The driver's side one, I've got this one in place now and uh, a couple things that interfered. The bracket that the fuel filter goes on, um, 
that interfered just a little bit right in the corner there. You could also probably notch the new frame rail, but I chose to just unbolt it right there, two 10 millimeter bolts, and just lift it up out of the way. Of course, I'm gonna be extremely cautious. Like I said, I've got it capped uh, where the, the you know fuel line is or whatever, but I'll definitely be very cautious when I'm welding around it. I may, may move it out of there a, a little bit differently than it's setting right now, but that was one thing that interfered. And then hopping to the outside, um, I had just a couple, couple pins that inserted into the frame holding the, the wire harness there. And then this cover that goes over the wire harness, same deal, just a little push pin that interfered. So I popped all those out and then I was able to get that pushed into place. So the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna trace all around the edge of this so that I can clean up the frame and get it prepped for welding. Now I'm not going to bore you with all the details because I'm going to, now that I've got everything tapped in, I'm going to use the clamp and I'm going to work my way back making sure I've clamped everything tight as I weld it. I'm going to weld as solid as I can around everything. So I'm not even going to do a time lapse on this. It's going to take a while. But now you can see where I'm going with it. So I'll, I'll check back when I've got it welded in. I've got them welded in now. Um, some of it's not all that pretty, but I think it's going to hold. So on some of the spots like here, there was a little bit of a gap. And so I just filled in the whole gap. Kind of, There's kind of two separate parts to the frame from the factory that of course are you know connected, but there's a little bit of a gap here and maybe I could have shoved this back or I guess it would be forward, but I just chose to fill the gap in uh, with a bead. Uh, filled it in along the bottom. There again, some of it's not all that pretty, but uh, I think it's gonna hold. Kind of do the same thing around here. The frame was actually rotted out. There were holes down here that weren't supposed to be there. So, uh, but I filled in with a bead all the way up to the body mount bracket here, body mount gusset. 
um, just to add some extra strength and I did the same thing there. So I really spent quite a bit of time welding here and, and there again. <laughs> some of these welds aren't the prettiest looking things, but um, it's, it's tough when you're welding on some questionable metal. That's kind of what you wind up with. So uh, on the inside here, same thing there, filled in the gap. Um, I cleaned it up a little bit with a, a flap disc just to knock off some of the slag and whatever. But, um, but that's kind of what I got over there. Over on this side, you can see this was not a full repair of everything. And I might put another plate in here, we'll see. Um, but right now at this point, this is what we got going on. I'll talk to the owner and see how much more time he wants me to spend on it. But same deal, just welded all the way around, 100% weld, filled in the gap right along there, filled in the gap around the bottom. This was probably the worst part to do out here. These are probably the ugliest welds because I had a little bit more trouble with it. the brake line, the e-brake cable, and the wire harness. I had a little bit more trouble getting in here with a grinder to clean it up. And uh, and yeah, anyways, it, it's not gonna go anywhere. But, uh, but yeah, not necessarily the prettiest thing, but it'll hold. So the next thing I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to um, hit it with some undercoat, get everything covered in a nice coat of, of 3M undercoat, and then I'm gonna spray some fluid film inside of these frame rails and try and soak everything that's inside to prevent anything from rusting further. Last night, I sprayed it all with 3M undercoating, rubberized undercoat black. Uh, today, I'm gonna be spraying some fluid film inside the frame rails to try and neutralize everything that's in there and protect it from getting worse. So, um, here's, here's the end result. So I kind of hit the frame about as far back as I could uh, with the undercoat. I wire brushed it just by hand, but it's, it's looking pretty good. And it's, uh, of course, since I undercoated it, it's, it's harder to tell the difference between the lime green new frame rails and the rusty old ones so here is the the bad news and i talked to the customer and he just said to leave it don't spend any more time on it this addressed the main problem but it's this is definitely a weak spot right here you can see there's a hole there and if you work your way back there are more holes so this did not fix everything but uh it's a really good start you saw how bad it was and so we're in a lot better shape than we were before. So that is what it is looking like. Now I'm gonna start the process of putting everything back together again. I've got the wire loom hanging down over here. I've got the, the hanger. I think that's gonna just bolt right together and that's gonna overlap no problem. Uh, I've got a couple things to figure out over here. I think, yeah, because we got our exhaust mount that's supposed to go right there. So a couple things to sort out. And then of course we got to get the gas tank back in and the exhaust back on. But there is so far the finished product. I'm done working on the frame anyways. So uh, I think it's gonna be pretty good. Here is the finished product out in the wild. So you can see there's a little bit of rust on this truck, but overall it's not too bad of a truck. So it's definitely worth doing, doing the fix on. So we'll see if I can get a good shot of it underneath here. You can see I got the wire loom and everything tucked back up in there. That's how that side's looking. And then over on this side, there we got this side. So all in all, it went pretty good. Um, definitely spent some time on it, but uh, definitely worth doing. <laughs> 